Hey YouTube, it's your girl Crystal, and today we're going to talk about credit, okay y'all? I'm going to tell y'all how I raised my credit score from 425 to 626 in like six months, six and a half months. All right, y'all. So in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how I did it. I'm going to try to be as detailed as possible. If you stay to the end, which you should stay to the full video because I'm going to give some tips on um, little things that you can do to boost your credit score faster that I found out, y'all. So we're going to get right into it. I'm going to have to use my phone and I got notes and stuff because I did a whole lot of like, I when I say I was looking at so many videos, which by the way, I'm not a credit person, like a credit, uh, what's it called? The people who... um. You know, fixed credit, I'm not a person that does that. But this is what I did for myself. So everything that I say in this video is what I did for myself. So if you're a credit consultant um, person or something like that, you might not want to watch my video because it's, it's not, <laughs> it's not, it's just what I did, you know. I'm just warning because like I said, this is what I did. So if you have any tips or anything that you could add to the video, you could leave it below. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Y'all subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And like I said, this is what worked for me, okay? Now, I'm just going to tell y'all how I went about it, all right? We, so, don't leave nothing negative down in the comments because it is what I did. I know it, this is what worked for me. So, y'all, this is the first thing that I did, and I got a whole list. Um, The first thing you going to, oh, yeah, the first thing you got to do is pull your credit report, period. Like, you can't do nothing without knowing where you, where you stand. So, pull your credit report. You can pull it from... Um, annualcreditreport.com. See y'all, I, I had a little thing I put in my notes thing. Because I knew I wanted to do this video if my credit did raise, which it did. So you need to pull your credit report. Um, once you pull your credit report, like I said, you go on annualcreditreport.com. It's free. Do not pay no money for it. Because it's some that you can sign up. You don't have to do it. You can you get one a year. So you can pull it. Pull your credit report. It's like... This is not the first page. The first page have your address and name and stuff. But, like, this is kind of what one of them look like. Which one is this one? You can pull all three of them. Because, okay. So, um, try, like I said, I'm going to try to be as detailed as possible. I have my notes, so I won't get off track too bad. But, so, you know, it's Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. Those are those are the three um, bureau, credit bureaus. So... All right, so pull your credit report. You're going to get your account numbers. Not going to have your full account number on there for fraud reasons. So with that being said, once you gather all three of your um, credit reports, you're going to look at the account number. So like, for example, capital one. So this is my account number. You see those star, 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 star. So it's other numbers. They're not going to put the whole thing. So that's, so I didn't know that. So I was looking like, where's the whole account number? Da, da, da. Now you will have the whole account number if you have like a um, statement stuff. You might, because some of my, um, like, don't you know how they, they mail you the bill or whatever. It, it, it didn't have the full number or whatever. So if you don't, that's fine. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Because I didn't have the full account numbers for a lot of mine either. So just gather as much as you can because one um, bureau might have an extra number or something. So look at all of them, line them up, and then go from there. You're going to do that. All right, y'all. So we got our credit report. We printed it out. Oh, I also wanted to say um, this was an issue for me. You have to make sure that your browser supports, like, um, that they can print or whatever. If it's, if it's not, you can always go to your public library. Just in case. If you don't have a computer or whatnot, you can go to the library. You can print out your... Because um, they always have the updated, like, new software and stuff. So, you should be fine there. You're going to do that. So, I, like I said, okay. So, number one was print out the free credit report on annualcreditreport.com. Then number two is you're going to match all the account numbers and get as many numbers as you can. Like I just said, that's number two. Number three. Okay. You're going to hand write the letters. I know you can dispute it online. So, okay, this is another disclaimer real quick. Everything that I saw, I watched so many videos. Like when I say I watched, I watched about, I watched a, I watched a lot of videos, a whole lot of videos. So everybody kind of had a little bit, something different to say. But what I will say is that um, when you do it online, you're like voiding some of your rights. I'm not sure what rights they are, but I wasn't trying to do that. So I didn't do it. I watched this one 
um, video and they basically said, um, if you handwrite it, it's a system that the credit bureau has that they, um, any dispute letter, let's say if you type it up, is this quicker or more professional or whatever, they send it through a system. I forgot the name of the um, machine or whatever. But, so it looks for certain keywords. If it has those keywords, it might just spit it out. If somebody, if you had a different experience, uh, this is just my experience. This is exactly, I'm telling you what I did. Like, I really am telling you what I did. You guys, like, I'm giving full transparency. Like, I'm telling you all my credit, <laughs> my credit score and everything. Like, so I hope this really helps somebody because I hand wrote the um, letter. Hand write it, hand write it. I don't care how long it take. I'm doing this video so it can streamline it because I had to look at multiple videos to see how to even go about even disputing the letter. What I mean, disputing my um, credit score and like what's on my credit and everything. All right, so hand write it. Then once we hand write the letter, what do I say in the letter? Okay, that's where I was at. I was like, okay, so okay, I can hand write it. I'm like, okay, I'm on board. What do I say? So, I got all stuff on this table, y'all. I printed out. Y'all gonna see little notes on my stuff because, um, like I said, this is, like, literally what I did. Also, I did this December of 2018. December of, so, about a year, a little over a year ago. Okay? So, this is my experience from then. Don't forget that. So, I got, a, like, a regular dispute letter. You know, you could Google them. And... You could change it up a little bit, but just so you know what to say. Like, I didn't know what to put in. I'm like, okay, what do I put in it? But basically, this one says, okay. Hold on. So, this was my notes. Don't, I told you, just don't mind the water. So, dispute. So, you put your name, the the credit bureau that you're sending it to, if it's going to be um, Experion, TransUnion. The reason I put was, inaccurate payment history reporting then you got to put um you write you can write in between that um like a synopsis or get whatever like what i said i'm not gonna say everything i said but basically i give you a gist of it you could dm me i'm on ig if you wanted to like if you really lost i i'll help you well i'll at least tell you what i put so i just basically said i started off like this dear credit bureau this letter is a formal complaint that you are reporting inaccurate and incomplete credit information. And you know, you go from there. Whatever you, whatever your heart desire, whatever you want to say. Once you say what you're going to say, you put the account name, number, which you're getting off of your credit report. Put the account name and number, as much of the account number as you have. And you got to put a category, okay, of why you're trying to dispute this. Another thing I didn't know, <laughs> why are we disputing this? So... Um, a couple of reasons that I found that's that you could put no knowledge of this account, uh, confirm accuracy of balance and not mine, period. I don't know this account. So, <laughs> but, um, you, you have to have this. Now I'm telling you this because when I was writing it, I didn't know none of this. Like I was like, okay, I was just figuring it out as I went. So once you do that, um, so you're writing the, the, um, letter. You want to make sure that you uh, put a copy of your ID and a copy of, you, of the utility bill, okay? Um, you want to do that because you don't want them to say, like, you don't want them to try to push back and be and say that it, that you're not you. So, if you do that, you you are avoiding all of that. Like, yes, I'm me. This is proof. So, I sent a copy of my license and a copy of my light bill or whatever utility bill you want to do, but I've sent that, a copy of my license and a copy of my light bill, which with each um, envelope, so with, with each letter. So it was three, you know, three and three. So, okay, we're moving right along. I'm sorry if I'm talking fast or I'm, I don't mean to talk, I just talk fast. Um, all right, so once you do this, um, you're going to make copies for yourself. So that's what I did. I made copies, okay? So you have it, okay? Because... This is one thing you got to put in work. Like, I'm making this video to hopefully help somebody that's trying to fix their credit or to increase their credit score to be able to, like, just um, kind of have, like, the process of, like, disputing the letter in one area and, you know, just some help in just in one video. So, I hope hopefully this helped y'all. All right. So, once you make the copies, you're going to send a certified mail.
Okay. You, when you go to the post office, it is, you're going to send a certified mail with the receipt. When you send a certified mail with the receipt, it looks like this. These are blank ones. I got y'all. I'm telling y'all, I got y'all, okay? Like, this stuff, I like, I got I do, I got y'all. I'm going to tell y'all exactly, I, I, exactly how I did it. Like, no lie. So, it's this. You get this from the post office. Um, at my post office, if you go pick up a package, don't you know how they have like that little island that has like little slips in there? That's where mine was at in there. So, send this certified mail. This is the return receipt. All right. I should have brought an envelope in here. I don't have an envelope. I use a piece of mail real quick. All right. So, this is the envelope, right? So, what you're going to do is to send a certified mail. It's videos on there on YouTube, of course, how to send certified mail. So, you can go watch them. But I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how to send a certified mail. Okay. So, what you're going to do is you're going to write, obviously, your return address the, where you're sending it to. Then, you take this one right here and you're going to put... Um, no, you're going to peel off this tracking number. This one up here, this is a tracking number right here. Okay, because this number matches this number and this number. So you're going to peel this off and you're going to put that right here in article number, number two. Okay, so you're going to peel this off and put it right here. And then right here, you're going to put the, who you're sending it to, the addressee. So if it's Experian, put their address, uh, TransUnion, whoever, put it right here. All right? And since we're talking about this one, you take this tracking number, put it right here, fill out the address. Then you're going to, um, over here, you're going to mark certified mail. See this right here? Certified mail. And the number three, service type. You're going to click, I mean click, you want to hit certified mail. This is an example of one being completed. This is what I did. So this is the blank one. This is what I did. So I pulled off the tracking number, put it right here, put the um, credit bureau right here. And then when you get to the, no, when they receive it, they, um, gonna, they have to sign for it. That's the point of this. So they can't say that they did not receive it. Okay. So I did all of this and raised my credit score for free, but you do have to pay for the certified mail. The certified mail, when you do it, you get this receipt, um, like these these little things. I just attached it to here. For me, it cost me $20.10. Certified mail. Okay? So, that's how much it cost me. I did it December 19th, 2018. Okay? So, I don't know if they went up on their prices. I don't know. But I, I kept these this though so this is what they're going to give you back as a receipt to track it from the post office okay all right y'all with me yeah i hope y'all with me i hope y'all with me all right so all right so we didn't wrote the letter we didn't gave a reason you know we don't know this i don't know what you're talking about why i owe you that's basically what we saying you know why do i owe you please tell me Y'all looked at so many videos. It's like three letters like that you could do. Like, so you do this is a, this is the uh dispute letter. Then you could do another another um letter that's basically saying prove it. And then after that, if they come back again, then you could it's like so I didn't have to get to point to number two. So hopefully we don't have to do that. So um all right. On this side, you put your address. Okay, so we was talking about this side. On this side, you put your address. I'm sorry for anybody that knows how to do certified mail. I'm sorry, but I had I had, I just wanted to do a quick explanation in it because I didn't know how to send nothing certified. I never had to send nothing certified. So um, on this side, you put your address. So ultimately, you're gonna have this has see the pull off. That's sticky. So when you pull it off, it sticks. So. Should I just show y'all? Like, yeah, cause yeah, I can show y'all. I'm gonna show you mine. So let's act like we didn't wrote something. Our return address right there, right? We got our return address. We put in who we sent it into here. We put in the tracking number right there. So we peel this off. Okay. 
and then we put in the tracking number right here. Sorry if it's not straight. Tracking number right there. We put in, we check in certified mail. Okay. So once we do that, we can take this off. Just cut off the side. Cut off the side. And we're gonna put it on. Obviously, it wouldn't be a used envelope, but you just can put it on the back. It goes on the back. Because this is what when it gets to wherever the destination to whichever credit bureau they their workers whoever receives it will sign this and then they'll tear this off and this is what that's what you get back in the mail this is what i got that's how i know that they got it see how i say transunion december 24 2018 that's when they received mine all right i hope i'm saying this and not confusing y'all but I'm, I'm trying my best not to confuse you guys so we took this off, right? Doesn't matter what order. So um, on your envelope, you wanna have your return address and who you sending it to. It has it on here. Place sticker at the top of an envelope at the top of the envelope to the right of the return address and then fold it. So mm -mm. gonna peel this off. And you're gonna do this on the front. So to the top. So let's say your return address is right here. Over here. I'm gonna put it like right over here. Oop. And I'm just doing this like whatever way, but it's like this. And then you bust a fold on a dotted line. Okay. Boom. So, I left mine like this till I got to the post office because, see what I'm saying? This is the receipt. So, if you have, since I had three, I just left it on there. Once You could tear it off if you want to, but then you got to uh, keep track of them. You might as well leave them on there. Post office will do their thing over here. They'll tear it off, get this to you. So, then the, where it's the address to where it's going is exposed then. Once it gets to the destination, they're going to sign it and say, we got it. And then they're going to tear this off. And then this comes back to you as proof that they got it. Okay? Boom, bada, bing. Like that. So I spent $20 on that. That's all, that's all the money I spent in for time looking to see what to even do. So now that we did that, we sent it. It's gone. We need to set our alarm for 30 days. The credit bureaus have 30 days to reply, okay? They have 30 days. 30 days, all right? So, oh, I set my alarm. Yeah, this is a key part. I set my alarm for 30 days from when I received back this, saying that they received it. So, like, December 24th, 30 days, okay? Now, you guys could look it up because I honestly don't remember. I can't remember if it's business days or regular days, but you can Google and see how long does um, it take for the how long does the credit bureau have to respond to a dispute. Do that. Um, sorry, some of these steps are very vital, like handwriting it. Don't skip that. It takes some time, but don't, don't, don't skip it. It's not worth it. I mean, like, if you're going to do this, you might as well just try to hit it hard. And that's what I was trying to do, so... Because when, baby, when I looked at my credit score and I thought it was, I was like, it was already bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I was still at like 515, 520, 30, probably 515, you know what I'm saying? But still, I was like, no, nah, like 4, 6, like, come on. All right. Let me see. I'm going to start talking. Um, all right. So, set our alarm for 30 days. Now, the part that don't nobody want to hear, you got to pay your bills. <laughs> you just do. You gotta pay your bills. So I did. Um, I had a, I had one credit card. My limit was I'm telling y'all my business. Uh, my limit was five hundred dollars. So I had to, which ain't nothing. And it's a I tell y'all like, toward the end why that's that. Um, but you have to pay it, even if you pay the minimum. Don't skip out on it. Don't say you know like don't skip 
just don't skip the payment. Of course, pay as much. They want you to pay it off within that month. That's the best. That's the ideal situation. If you cannot, you know, it is what it is. Definitely make the minimum payment. That's what I did. Make the minimum payment. Um... Oh, next, okay. Don't pay the agencies. I did not pay the agencies. Like, let me show y'all. Don't pay them because you're you're trying to dispute this. So you want to make sure that um, it's even a valid balance. Okay. Oh my. Let's see. It was one that was a good one here. What was the name of? It was like Time Warner. It was like the cable, right? And there was a divergent. Uh, okay, whoever this is. Ability recovery sources. You see this? Ability recovery sources. We don't know them, okay? We don't know you. I don't know you. I don't care who you're saying that you're representing. Don't pay them because what I found out looking at all them videos is that when you pay them, it's like you're opening up a whole nother inquiry, basically, like for them. Because let's say I let's say I, let's say I owe Time Warner, and let's say this is Time Warner's agency, like they sold my account to them, the Ability Recovery Services. When I start paying them, now we look like I got another debtor. You know what I'm saying? Like now it's an additional one. It's not linked together, like because because Time Warner then sold it. So, but my thing is that my contract was with Time Warner. I don't even know you. Remember that, though. Like, like this will work for me. I don't know. People might tell you, just go ahead and pay it. I didn't. Don't call me. I don't, I'm not going to pay it. No, no. Not until, I, not until this process was done. The 30 days was done, and I could see if they removed it or whatever. Don't pay the agency. It's up to you. This, I'm just making this video just to give y'all what I know and what I've learned but whatever you, if you feel comfortable with it, if you don't, you don't have to use it. I'm just telling y'all. Another thing, don't co-sign for people that you are taking the responsibility for whatever you co-sign for. Do not co-sign for, well, what I'm not, well, okay, take that back. I'm not saying don't co-sign, but if you already got bad credit and stuff, just remember that when you do co-sign, be responsible that if that person does not pay, you are responsible, period. I be seeing them body hunter shows where, you know, they be called signing and they, they be wanting they 10 bands and all that. Like, you basically saying, like, yeah, we're, we're going to pay for this. But you know that you and that person have an agreement that they're going to pay. But on paper, if they don't pay, you're the backup. Don't forget that. I don't know if I'm saying that because everybody don't know stuff. And I mean, no, like, don't know. Don't understand certain, certain like, the way stuff really work. And I'm, that's why I'm not saying that. Uh, I don't want to assume that somebody just knows like what a cosigner is. Like you really, re you're really assuming the responsibility of a balance if that person defaults and does not pay. Don't forget that because that's a serious situation, especially for thousands of dollars. All right, um, let's see what's next. What's next? Um, that's basically so. Okay, so that's basically all that I did for for that part. Um. So I wrote, I disputed my, I disputed everything on my, um, on my credit report, right? Definitely look at your name, look at the addresses. You need to make sure that everything links up to who you are because you could dispute all of that. Once you dispute it and it comes back, it'll say, remove this account, remove this account. Or it'll come back and say, um, no, this is a valid account. So the ones that say it's a valid account, you can either proceed to step number two, which is basically show proof that. You, you know, you had a contract with them. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to get Credit Karma. That's going to have Trans TransUnion and Equifax on there, okay? Um, you're going to get that. I don't use Credit Sesame. I did sign up one time, but it's TransUnion, come to find out. I thought it was the other one, but it's not. It's TransUnion. So definitely want to monitor your credit. Definitely. Because it does a great job of updating you, giving you tips or whatnot. Another thing, this is a tip. Do not let the people run your credit. Let's say you go to Old Navy and they're like, oh, you could get 20% off if you sign up for this, this uh, credit card. I'm talking to the people that you know that your credit is bad, period. Like, you know they're not going to give it to you. Don't even run the risk. Don't even let them Don't even let them say it's a soft hit. It's no point. It's no point. If you're not going to get approved, don't let them do it. I did that multiple times. Target, Old Navy, 
So now you don't get approved, but now I got a soft, maybe soft heart hit. Like you don't, you don't, I'm, don't even do it. Just don't even do it until you know that your um, credit score is increasing. So I wrote it down. Okay, so um, December 17th of 2018, my TransUnion was 469 uh, and my Equifax was 465. Okay. Within less than a month on January 9th, 2019, I sent the dispute letters. Um, I paid my, I was paid, making sure I paid my, um, I got student loans, I got credit cards and all that. I'm making sure I made the minimum payments, okay? If you have student loans, try to get a deferment. If they won't do that, um, I really, I hate to say this, but I really wouldn't worry about it because it depends, like, my credit, my credit, um, my student, not my credit, my student loans are, was not really affecting my credit score that bad, to be truthfully honest, like, it was going up, like, I, I have been making one, um, one of my student loans consistently, because I have a co-signer on there, and, um, so that one, but I have my other ones, I wasn't paying, so, don't, I'm not saying don't worry about it, but I didn't worry about it, okay, 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 so, that just take that with a grain of salt. I mean, you know. So January 9th, my credit score went to 555. Okay, so it increased 86 points, y'all. 86 points. All right. And this is just by making the making your payments on time. I also also I wanted to add in here real quick that. Uh, when I did the dispute letters, a couple accounts were removed. About three of them were removed. So that also helped my credit. I did pick up overtime, okay? Um, I was working like 60 hours a week. Um, I had to, to be able to try to, like, get out the hole. So, um, and be able to put more money toward, like, uh, my credit cards and stuff. So pick up overtime if you can. Pay your bills. Whatever you need to do to pay your bills. I don't care if you Uber, um, Uber Eats. If you don't want people getting in your car, um, delivery stuff. You can go ahead and get an additional part-time job somewhere. Just try to do something to bring in more income. If your um, regular income is not, if you, it's, you know, it's not bringing in enough that you can pay extra on bills. Then, Jan I mean February sixteenth. So now. We're two months out from December where we started. My credit score was 559, so I only went up four points at that point. Then by July, which was six and a half months in, y'all, I was at 612. 612, 612 TransUnion and Equifax was 615. I have screenshots of this because I screenshotted this. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this in there uh in the video. So y'all by this so from December to July, my credit score had increased 150 points. Yes. By doing just the... Oh, one, one more big tip. Oh, wait, let me finish this. Um, By December, which had been a year, my credit score went up to 100... It went up from, from within a year, 161 points. My TransUnion was 623, and my Equifax was 626. Okay. So it is possible I did not use a credit consultant company just honestly for financial reasons. Like I didn't want to pay. I was willing to, you know, try to see if, if I could try. If I needed to, then that would have been a whole nother situation. Like not a hope, but I would have looked into that differently. But I was able to raise my score. Another main tip, y'all, main tip with credit cards. When you pay your credit card, you pay it by the due date. But to really raise your credit score, this is a jewel right here, y'all. And actually, my best friend, she she told me about this. Like, well, she confirmed it really. Because I, di I didn't know I was really doing this because I was paying off my credit card and I really wasn't using it. But she said, because what, what it is is that you have to make sure that you pay by the statement date. Your statement date is different. Could be. Not everybody's. But mine is different than my due date. I have it in my phone too, y'all. I put everything in my phone in these notes. So I don't care if y'all know like what I got. But like, um, so 
Like if y'all could see my capital, I have capital one card. So my capital one Quicksilver, the statement date, statement date, okay, is the 24th. The other one is the 12th. So I have it in my phone so I know. Now my due dates are different. The point is you have to have your payment in before 8 p.m. on your statement date. Because when the statement closes, that's what they're um, gathering that information. That's what they're looking at your utilization, which they, you, of course, for credit, they want you to stay under 30% of your utilization, which is not much if your credit uh, balance is only like 50, I mean, $500 or $300. That's not much at all. So they want to see that. So another little tip or trick i'm not promoting this but i'm this is what i have to do sometimes because sometimes you know you just gotta you just gotta finagle some stuff and you know move some stuff around but that's the reason why we're working on our credit because we don't want to do that i'm working on financial freedom personally like i don't want to have any debt within the next couple of years so i don't mind sharing this it is what it is like you know what you could do is for example um my statement date is the 24th <coughs> So let's say my balance is like my, my credit card hold $500 and it's like whatever, $400, $300. You can pay that. If you have it, pay it. Okay. You can wait to the day. Pay it either the 23rd. Really, you should wait. Might as well to the 24th. You can pay it that morning. After 8 p.m. Don't pay it after 8 p.m. Another thing. I'm talking about Capital One. I don't know about no other credit cards. I'm talking about Capital One. Pay it before. Uh, on a on your statement date before 8 p.m. because of the process, you pay it. When it does the statement, it's going to process it to zero. Let's say you pay it fully, fully off. Let's say my, my let's say my balance was 350. I paid a whole 350, right? But I really don't got the 350. But I'm paying it because I know like I got to pay another bill with that 350. I pay it pay it on the 24th. 8 p.m. come around. It take the payment. Now my statement closed. My balance is zero, right? You could use it the next day. I could use it on the 25th. I don't recommend that normally, but that is a little something if you're working to get your money right to pay off your balances, okay? Like I said, I'm just being transparent. I'm not saying to be moving and shaking like that, but I mean, sometimes you have to, you know, you know, you sometimes you just got to do certain, you just got to, you know, you got to play the system how they, you know, you got you to gotta do what you got to do to get your credit score up. So let's say you got to use that 350 for something. Let it go. It's going to post. You know what I'm saying? Then you have to use your credit card for it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Use your credit card for whatever bill you was going to use. And I, the point is to honestly get out of credit cards. Pay your stuff and don't have to deal with them. But I understand sometimes it's not that easy. It's not that clear cut and dry. But you can do that. Statement date is what is key. Pay it by the end because that's what they're tracking. Okay. This is what I did. This is what I know. I hope this has helped somebody. If it helped one person, and I hope y'all understood. I hope I was not all over the place. And if you're still here with me, I appreciate y'all are my MVPs. If you have not already, please subscribe. And let me know any tips below that you have. Because um, I'm still, we still working. Because 600 is not, I mean, you know, 626, that's not... That's not technically even good, but from where I was at, that's great. Like, I'm so happy. Like, I don't care. That's all. Like, I gotta let y'all know. I gotta let my MVPs know. Like, what's up? Let's get this credit together. Let's get our money together. The point of the matter is pay off them credit cards. Just have them for emergencies. That's what you really want to do. Um, I will also follow Dave Ramsey. He have a lot of good financial tips. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for spending time with your girl Krista. Like I said before, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. I hope this made sense. If I um, look back and I forgot something, I'll add it in or do another video. But y'all, let's get our credit scores up. We got this. We can do it. Um, always. Um, oh, one more thing. I forgot. These is who you send it to. These is the um, screenshot. It. This is who I sent mine to. Double check. But like I said... I'm trying to help the people that's lazy that don't want to look for nothing. This is this is these are the addresses that I sent the dispute letters to. Do it. Okay? I hope you can screenshot it. Um I almost forgot that. Yeah, send it. That's where I, that's where I sent it to. Um yeah, like I said, I hope this helped you guys and let's just work and save our money and I appreciate y'all for watching. I love y'all. Bye.